Hongi Hong Wan from University of Kentucky, and Dr. Davis is my advisor. It is my great pleasure to be here and to share our research progress to all the professional fellows here. Um, so today I will talk about how we make the iron plate and nanoparticle functionalized membrane for the chlorinated contaminant treatment. The first question, why should we treat the chlorinated contaminants? So there is a tragedy happening in Japan in 1968. Um, the rice oil production was contaminated by one kind of chlorinated contaminants, which called PCBs. And it caused like 14,000 people affected and 500 people dead. And also the same tragedy happened in Taiwan in 1979. So that's the, the question is like, now what are the PCBs? The PCBs is polychlorinated biphenyls, a group of toxic chemicals which are largely produced and used as in cells material uh, and lubricates since 1920s. PCBs might be found in electrical material and uh, plastic. For toxicity, the PCBs will cause the arcing like skin conditions in adults and neural behavior and immunological changes in children. PCBs are known to cause cancer in animals and PCBs have been classified as probably carcinogenic to, hum to human by EPA. So for the current situation, PC PCB production was banned in the United States in 1979, and it was prohibited by 170 countries in all the world until 2014. And the EPA requires there's less than 0.5 ppb level in drinking water, and the FDA mandates less than 0.2 to 3 ppm level for all the food. So PCBs have also been found in at least 500 of the around 1,600 current or former NPL sites. And PCB released after arsenate, lead, mercury, vinyl chloride in, in this ATSDR 2017 sub substances priority list. This is a list not about the most toxic or chem chemicals. It's a list based on the combination of the frequency and the uh, toxic toxicity and the exposure, potential for exposure to the human. So what are the methods people use for the PCB treatment? The common method is for the incineration and landfill disposal. For incineration, it can destroy PCBs, but it's very sensible to the core co contaminants. Uh, for the landfill disposal, it's inexpensive, but however, it cannot destroy the PCBs. So the iron plate and nanoparticle method have, have been investigated. For this method, the iron pole was used as an electron donor, and the plate and shell was used as a catalyst. So for, the, for this nanoparticle, they can produce the highly reactive hydrogen radicals. These radicals can be used for the PCB treatment. However, if we apply this technique in the PCB treatment, they face di big dif difficulties in the, such as the aggregation and the le leaching for, for particles of leaching in the environmental and the stability issue and the longevity and also, for the particle itself, it's hard to recycle and reuse. How to deal with these questions? So we combine the catalytical particles with the membrane separation. What we do is like we functionalize, we functionalize a polymer chain inside the membrane pores. And with this, with this chain, they can absorb the metal ion, and then we can reduce the form of the particles inside the membrane pores. So the idea is like when the contaminate the solution path through the membrane, the PCB derate. And we can use this, this kind of membrane in different modules, like in the uh, filtration cell or in the big modules of membrane. So how we functionalize this, this membrane? What do we do first is like we hydrophilize the commercial PVDF membrane in the first step, and then we institute polymerize the polyacrylic acid inside membrane pores. The polyacrylic acid is a well-known hydrogel. It can absorb water and something else, like the metal, metal ion. And after that, we can reduce this like, metal ion to form particles. So we also test the membrane stability, the polyacrylic acid stability in the membrane. So we test in the seven days continuous flux test. And for, with this like, very stable flux results in both acidic and base condition, we can, we can tell the PAA 
polyacrylic acid is stable functionalizing the membrane. And also, understanding how this the nanoparticles properties inside the membrane is very significant to understand their kinetics and also for the simulation of the treatment. So what we do is like, we use a focus on beam to make a very smooth slice of the membrane cross section. For example, this membrane, this results we get is like for the membrane with the 80 micron thick, and we take the cross section, and we then we quantify the particle properties, like the particle size, particle composition, and particle densities with the depths inside membrane, underneath the membrane pores. So from the results, we can tell in this 80 micron thickness membrane, inside the membrane from the, the blue dots, the inside membrane particle size very uniform inside membrane. And how about their degradation performance? So the degradation performance is really good. We test in both the batch study and the chemical flow study. So for the chemical flow study, after 14, resist, 14 seconds residence time, there is more than 95% PCB degrade. We also test for the if the membrane can be reused, regenerated and reused for this treatment. Uh, what do we do is like we first we we make fresh made iron uh, iron plate and particles in the solution without membrane, and then we we pass we pass the uh, oxygen, try to deliberately mix the oxides, and then we use sodium bicarbonate reducer again. And for compared to the the orange one and blue one, the orange one is like the regenerate regenerated ones. So for they have the same XRD crystal pattern which, which proves that this uh, nanoparticle can be regenerated. And then we do this like test for the four cycle four regen regeneration cycles and test for the reactivities. So the, this mem this membrane keep the reactivities after four cycles and their particle size slightly slightly increase during these four regeneration cycles. So in conclusion uh, compared to the other te technologies, this, our te technologies can control the particle size and printing leaching and also for the aggregation. And it, this uh, uh, technique is easy to regenerate and reuse. So compared to the incineration and landfill disposal, it destroys PCBs and controls the yield of toxic byproducts. And this, me this method can be used in heavy metal absorption and other chlorinated organic treatment like TCE. And it also shows the potential for the functionalized ceramic membrane polymer brushes. So currently we have an ongoing cooperation with the nutri nutrition science department for the toxicity analysis of degrade products on the micro microfilm. And now we get access to the contaminant sites. We can go and get some field samples for the further testing. And of course, they have some challenges about the scaling up this technology. It's made focus on the, there is neither pre-treatment needed for this technique, and also the longevity of iron nanoparticles, and the cost and scaling up, some scaling up issues. Then in the end, I want to thank my advisor and all the, uh, our mem members, membrane center fellows. Thanks. Thank you.